Hi, my kiddos. So, this is our final video reading of Home of the Brave. I will get nearly to the end of the book, but I will save the very last um, two chapters um, to read to you on a live Zoom, okay? All right, let's get started with this reading, though. We're going to read pages 210 to 238. Tread. By the time I'm over the fence, Gull has spotted me. She trudges over, slow but determined, like an old woman longing for her grandchild's embrace. When we reach each other, I put my head on her neck. You should, you should be in the barn, I say. I peer over her to see if Lou is outside. The sky is rich with stars like fresh black dirt sprinkled with tiny seeds. The moon hangs low, a cupped hand of silver water. Cole nudges me. I know this means she wants an ear scratch. So I do as I am told. Tears warm my cheeks. A door slams. I see Lou heading to the barn. I crouch low behind Cole. Don't want Lou to see me crying. She will be coming to get goal, and I must hide. The field is empty. There's nowhere to go but the big tree. I dash over and clamber up easily. It's a good climbing tree. High up in the tangle of the branches, I watch the cars charge by like a herd of panicked animals. Goal looks up at me. Wondering why her ear scratches over. She heads slowly in the direction of the tree. I wipe my nose on my sleeve. No, I say softly, go away, go. She settles in under the tree and stares at me, up at me like a motherless puppy. I'm so high, I should be able to see forever. In the starlight, I imagine that if I try hard enough, I can see my family's thatched hut, my father's sharp horned cattle, the tree where I learn I am not meant to be a bird. Go away, I whisper. I am going to be here for a long time. Ganor. I have been in the tree forever when I hear a bus screech to a stop. Far across the field, I can just make out a tall figure climbing down the bus stairs. Gamera leaps over the fence and strides across the field. He's heading toward the barns, but then he stops. He looks at Gull. He looks up into the branches of my tree, and he laughs. Please don't tell me you're trying to fly again, he says. How did you find me here? I ask in a loud whisper. I woke up when you shut the door. I watched from the window when you got up, when you got on the bus, and I took the next one. Why, I demand. Ganor shrugs. Don't know exactly, but it was worth it just to see you stuck up there. Using his good hand, in one graceful move, he climbs up to join me. I don't want company, I say. He ignores me. So you're running away? I'm trying. Where to? Maybe I'm going home to find Mama. Ganwar nods. You think that's what she would want? It's what a man would do, I say. Ganwar rubs his chin. Hmm, what if she's already on her way here? I rub my eyes. Suddenly, I feel tired. If I lie uh, my back on this branch, I feel I could fall asleep for a week. I'm not used to making so many decisions. I'm not used to so many changes. In my old world, I was just Keck, a sil the silly boy. I was Luol's little brother. Ganwar's troublesome cousin, my parents' mischievous child. That was all. 
And that was enough. I sigh. There are too many hard things, I say softly. I can barely hear my own words. It isn't fair. I just want, I want everything I lost. Ganmore rubs a place where his hand should be. I look away. I don't want to think about what he has lost. Maybe I'll come with you, Ganor says. No, I say firmly, you stay. But it will never be right for me here, Keck. I have this, and he holds up his stump of an arm. And I have the gar. It's worse for me. I'll never fit in. If you're giving up, why shouldn't I? I don't answer him. But when I look at Ganwar's arm, I think of how he leapt into the tree like it was his only home. And how he does all the work I do with just one good hand to help him. I remember something my mama used to say on dark days. If you can talk, you can sing. If you can walk, you can dance. Ganwar, I whisper, what if she never comes? What if it's only me? I can't do it all by myself. Ganwar sends me a sad smile. My cousin, he said, you already are. Talk. I hear the crunch of someone walking. Lou comes out of the barn. Goal, she calls. What are you up to, old girl? Slowly, Lou makes her way over. She follows Goal's gaze up into the tree. My, my, she says. This may be the first time in history my cow has tread two boys. We climb down slowly. When I get to the bottom, Goal nudges me again. She wants an ear scratch. She wants her ear scratch to continue. I force myself to meet Lou's eyes. Moonlight glints on her silver hair like ice on snow. I'm sorry, I say, for being angry with you. It isn't your fault about the farm. He smiles. Come on, you two. I could use a hand. We head toward the barn. Goal follows. Kind yellow light spills from the house. Lou and Ganwar and I stand there in the silent barn, striking goal and waiting. After a while, I help Lou toss some fresh hay into goal's stall. How'd you end up in my tree this evening? Lou finally asks. I don't want to say the truth, but when Lou looks right at you, you cannot make up stories. I'm running away, I say. I see. Lou thinks about this for a moment. Want a cookie before you go? I think too. A cookie would not be such a bad thing. Chocolate, I ask. Yep. I follow Lou and Ganwar into the house. It might be a long time before I see chocolate again. Changes. I take a handful of cookies to show my gratitude. Lou sits across from us at the kitchen table. The light spreads gentle shadows. So you're running away, Lou says. That's a mighty big job. I watch while Lou gets us glasses of milk. On the top of the cold box, there is a picture in a frame. I see a pretty woman smiling. A man has his arm around her. He is tall and proud. Behind the woman is a small tree. Lou follows my gaze. That's me, she says. Very long time ago. And my husband, Robert. And that tree is the one you two climbed just now. I stare at the picture, then back at Lou. If I try very hard, I think once upon a time... I think maybe I can find that young woman in her face. I imagine a time when the barn didn't sag and the cattle were many and strong and hope grew fast and flowers in good earth as flowers in good earth.
I imagine Lou saying goodbye soon to this place that has been her home for so long to live in the world with no snow and no cows. Lou pulls down another picture. This is my sister, the one in L.A., she says. She has a little yard. I suppose I could plant some vegetables there. You can grow things year-round, she stares at the picture. Imagine that. I spot a tiny seed of something fine sprouting in Lou's eyes. My heart is glad to see it. I remember my aunt's words. Cake finds sun when the sky is dark. That was easy to do when I was a child in my life before. It's not so easy when the clouds are low and black. I wonder if finding the sun is one way to be a man. Drink my milk. The clock ticks. Ganwar and Lou are watching me. I know it would be better to wait for Mama here, I say at last. Lou and Ganwar nod. They don't say anything. I guess I could come back to work until you have to leave, I add. That would be great, Lou says. I know Gol would like that. She could use more attention, Ganwar says. The cow does love a good ear scratch, Lou agrees. She's good for petting, I say. And leaning on, Ganwar adds. She's She's a very unusual cow, Lou says. Another idea comes into my head, like a new friend knocking at the door. Sometimes I very much like my brain, I say. What do you mean, Ganwar asks. I smile. I think maybe I just found some sun for coal. Excuse me. Part four. When the spider webs unite, they can tie up a lion. That is an African proverb. When the spider, the spider webs unite, they can tie up a lion. Herding. When Saturday comes, Lou is waiting for Ganwar and Hannah and me in the barn. She sips her coffee mug. I just wish my trailer hitch hadn't rusted out, she says. We'll be fine, I tell her. Hannah is wearing her school backpack. I brought a map in case we get lost, she says, and some candy bars and water. It's a long way, Lou says in a worried voice. There's a lot of traffic. She shakes her head. I probably shouldn't be letting you do this. You probably don't have a choice, Ganwar says with a laugh. Maybe I should call ahead and explain things, Lou asks. Sometimes it's better to just walk up to the door and ask, I say. Lou grins. All right, then. Let's get this show on the road. She gives Gol a kiss. See you, girl. It's been a good ride. I take Gol's halter and off we go. The sun is our, the sun is steady, is a steady hand on our shoulders. We walk alongside the busy road for many steps. Gol and me, then Hannah behind us, and then Ganwar. When cars race by, they suck the air away. The huge truck grumbles past. Gol doesn't like the whoosh and roar. She stops hard and refuses to go on. I pull, and she pulls back. She hates being so close to traffic, I say. Pat go and talk to her. After a while, she agrees to move on. Good girl, I say, relieved. But up ahead, I see trouble is waiting. Traffic jam. We reach a crossing of two huge roads. Many lights hang from wires. Cars come and go like frantic ants. Don't worry, Genoir says. I'll tell you when it's safe. He turns to Hannah. You sure this is the right way? I'm pretty sure, she answers. Genoir watches the lights then steps into the road. Blue, a blue car zooms towards him, horn blaring. He leaps back. We wait a while longer. Then Ganwar dives back into traffic. Come on, he waves his hand and hurry. 
We cross three lanes of cars and come to a thin strip of land covered with grass and tiny purple flowers. We've still got three more lanes, Ganwar says. But Gol has decided the flowers are a tasty treat. She grazes happily while I yank on her harness. Hannah pushes Gol's rump. Come on, girl, Ganwar cries. The light turns yellow. Hurry, Hannah yells. Gol glances to see what all the noise is about. She chomps down one last bite. Then she ambles out into the road. The light turns red. We are in the middle of a sea of cars. Honking and shouting hurts our ears. Gol looks at me. As if to say, why is everyone in such a hurry? I pull, Hannah and Ganwar push, and nobody moves. Goal has come to a stop, and so has all the traffic. Cops. We are surrounded by cars, but no one is moving. It looks like the parking lot at the mall. Only everyone is grouchy. If you don't get that cow off the road, she's going to be lunch. Meat kid, man screams. Look, mommy, a little girl points out the window. Is that a parade? Heading slowly towards us, I see bright lights of red, white, and blue. Great, Ganwarn mutters. Cops. The car with lights gets stuck in traffic, too. A woman and a man in blue soldier clothes make their way through the knot of cars, they have guns on their hips. What's going on here, kids? Policewoman asks. My cow won't move, I explain. It's hard to take my eyes off her gun. For some reason, your cow is in the middle of six lanes of traffic on a busy Saturday. Some, excuse me, some reason why your, some reason your cow is in the middle of six lanes of traffic on a busy Saturday, policeman asks. We're going to the zoo, Hannah asks. Ganwar covers his eyes and groans. <sighs> the policeman can't decide whether to smile or frown. Their mouths are all mixed up. You taking her to see the animals or be one of the animals, the woman asks. Hannah clears her throat. <clears throat> She's going to be a new exhibit. Who's going to pay to see this old bag of bones, the man asks. She's going to be in the petting zoo, I explain. She likes to have her ears scratched. Go on, try it. Not me, the policeman holds up his hands. 